morning lovelies or whatever time of day it is for you where you are we have a bit of sunshine oh can you see can you sense that light coming in oh, makes such a difference in here doesn't it when the sun shines it's actually the forecast says we're going to have a completely dry day yay <laughs> oh my goodness so i'm going to make the most of that I'm going to run a number of errands this morning, just thinking about all the bits and bobs that need doing. And then I've got quite an ad mini day on my hands. Um, yeah, it's days like today when the sun's shining, I think, oh, I should be in the garden. But actually, yeah, let's get on with the ad mini stuff because some of it's long overdue. So, first things first, this morning I'm going to pop down to the garden and get another <laughs> one of my items from the shed to bring home nearly 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 done oh I've just thought of something else actually the um the three-pronged cultivator Paddy's old cultivator to give to Gary I might message Gary in a second I've seen Gary in the meantime but not at the garden I saw him in the coffee shop <laughs> he always sits in the window of the coffee shop so if I walk past he waves and says come in come in have a drink <laughs> and I go in I don't I don't usually have a drink, but um, every now and again, maybe a hot chocolate. But anyway, so I've seen him to chat to, but I haven't seen him in the garden to hand the tool over. I might even put it, I could put it outside his shed. No, I'd rather hand it over in person. Anyway, so yeah, reminder to self to get that tool out. So yes, allotment and then um, I've got a couple more bits I think this really is the end of it now to take to the charity shop. Um, oh, I might take you up there actually because it's quite a cute topper on the letterbox again. It's that letterbox that had the, you might have seen it around Easter time, it had the little pillar box topper, pillar box posting box, letterbox. And it had the little knitted chick and bunny and something else and a little basket, a knitted basket with knitted eggs in it. It was so cute. Right, so, uh, yeah, let's get this day underway. Um, and then, oh, there's more to catch up on, but let's get these couple of things out of the way first and then I can catch you up on what went on a couple of days ago. Eek. So I've arrived at the plot and there was something, I've actually just been chatting with a friend, I'll tell you about that in a second, but um, there was one thing that I thought odd last time I came down and I, it was only when I got home and I'd, I showed you a bit of footage from here, I got home and edited it. I suddenly realised, where is my tree lily? There's no sign of my tree lily. It should be, well it should be up to pretty much the top of the sign by now. Did someone take it? That's really upset me actually because so many friends said, oh you know, when your tree lily blooms in the middle of July or just remind us of you but it seems to have gone and not only from there but I also oh, I can't bear these <laughs> grass edges oh I can't bear it I can't bear it never mind but I also planted some in the herb bed and that too is absent it should be well, sort of down there, but it, it comes up here in front of the in front of the lovage, and it should be again. It should be three, four feet high by now. Gone. It's like literally out the whole garden. It's like someone's just come along and taken out those two things without my knowledge, without my consent. Ah, oh, that's really upset me. But there is something that has pleased me. Let's pop back to the shed. I don't know if I'm in an odd mood <laughs> or something, but um, yeah, I've just seen someone else and they're gonna have my water butt and all the guttering that's on the shed. And you know, it's great, it's going to a new home, but <laughs> it's just this feeling like every time I turn up to collect one of my tools, people say, have you got anything going? What, what have you got going spare? What are you getting rid of? What can I have? Can I get something? And I feel a little bit like, I've got to say my best, best, besties down here haven't done that. But I do feel 
<laughs> it's getting a bit like, okay guys, there's nothing left. You've stripped me clean of everything. And I mean, no one's offered me any, any cash for anything. Um, anyway, there we go. In fact, you know, when it, when it comes to besties, like say with Gary with the cold frame, he did offer me money, but I said no, because I got it for free. Another plot holder was throwing it away, so I got it for free, so no way. Um, and like I said, when it's besties, it doesn't matter. Right, and talking of besties, this is the... <sighs> it's a bit cobwebby. Hold on, how can I show you? This is the cultivator... This is Paddy's old cultivator and what I love about it is it's got quite a thick handle but then in places and you can see, oh I don't know if it will pick up on camera, it picks up to the naked eye, areas where here where the wood is, uh, this is slightly thinner from where he's held it year after year after year after year in his garden. So that I'm really happy is going to its new home. Look, I, I sound a bit churlish saying all that and I don't mean to. Um, it was my, you know, it's up to me. I'm, I'm, I'm happy to give things away. I'm happy that things are finding a new home. I suppose it's more the idea of wait to be offered. <laughs> anyway, yeah, <laughs> people can ask now and there's literally nothing Thing left. There's a few tools, actually there's a few long handled tools, rakes and things like that, but they are going to the community shed for everybody to use. Otherwise, yeah, I'm all out of stuff to give away. Right. Whew, it got a bit warm. <laughs> Goodness me. So, um, yeah, that's, it's so sad that that tree lily has, I mean, it's obviously been taken, <laughs> you know, why would it suddenly just completely not grow this year? in two places as well um so yeah all my i don't know yeah no one's going to see a lily on the end of my garden this year that makes me sad right i'm not going to be sad it's a beautiful day um time now to right charity shop then what am i doing? yeah i need to refer refer to notes yeah <laughs> come on Ooh. I thought I would bring you a little of the way with me to the charity shop. Now, bear in mind this is a main road. It's a very busy main road and it's coming up for lunchtime. Look at that sky! We are getting heading towards lunchtime. So, uh, the traffic might be noisy. Up and over the railway bridge. Oh, shade. Wow, it's so warm now. Now the clouds have parted to let a bit of sunshine through. Can you hear me? <laughs> oh. We're coming up to, gosh, so many people around. I think it is near lunchtime. But first of all, estate agents. Oh, just while that. Oh, it's a fire engine trying to get through. Let's have a look, let's have a look. Pretty house, pretty glazing in the top windows. Um, oh, that's lovely. Oh, done it. It looks like it's on the top floor. Yeah, I can tell by the, um, in this picture, I can tell by how short the windows are, so it's not on the ground floor. Oh, these are sweet, sweet cottages. Cottages? <laughs> yeah, they are so beautiful. They're just around the corner from where I live now. That'd be great. <laughs> uh, not, not for, what's that, 600k. Anyway, I'm just gonna let this little bit of traffic go. That's not what I'm here for. 
some of my fave shops, the Iron Mongers. You hear me talk of these guys often. You've even seen in there a little bit. This is where I get all my bits and bobs, wood, tools, screws, nails, all my odds and sods. Oh, <laughs> look, it's like a, Oh, you can't, oh, the sun's so bright, you can't see a thing today. Oh, never mind, let's just get on. Yeah, it's a sweet shop for, for DIY, for fans of DIY. And next door, our fabulous bookshop, independent bookshop. Yay. Obviously, that's another favorite place of mine. <laughs> but look, I wanted to show you the, um, the topper, the pillar box topper. <laughs> New one today for Pride. Oh, you can't, the light, I'm so sorry. Oh, if I come around the other side. Let's look at sky for a minute. <laughs> there we go. Now you can see it. I'm not sure what the turtles represent. Someone might need to inform me. And the fabulous St. Christopher's who do amazing work. The hospice, it's for a hospice that's sort of just up the road and around the corner where I've known lots of people have some care. So I'm going to come in here now and <laughs> just avoiding people, do a little bit of a drop off. What's in the window today? <laughs> the sun's too bright, we can't see a thing today. Oh, that's a beautiful bowl. Look at it. It's not, it's not a cheap charity shop though. Look, that's 20 quid. Oh, look at those measuring spoons. They're beautiful. You can't quite make them out. They're like leaves. And on the end of each spoon is a bird in a nest. So that's your half teaspoon, teaspoon, dessert, tablespoon, is it? 18 pounds goodness me right let me do my drop off it's just too noisy it's yeah it, we're heading up for lunchtime that's why it's noisy and then look suddenly the street goes quiet <laughs> oh it's sod's law isn't it but uh yeah it's nice to it's just lovely to see a blue sky for a change it's me <laughs> it was noisy out there i think the sunshine's brought people out i don't know i got a bit hot what I need to do now, cool down a bit, I need to wash my face, do my hair, it's a mess, have a bite to eat, calm down. And while I'm doing that, you can watch the following clips, which filmed, I filmed them two days ago, three days ago, I've lost track. Anyway, if you remember from a video, um, a few videos back, I was talking about, we've got a an issue on the roof, we need to get the roof sorted. You saw the drones flying up and having a look. We didn't use that company in the end, we've gone with someone else. So work started, honestly, I don't know what day, <laughs> what day of the week. Let's say the work started on Thursday. I think that's right. Mm. And, um, and then on Friday, the next morning, this happened. This all turned into a bit of a nightmare. <laughs> yeah, it's um, ah, it's all turning into. So this is a bit of a nightmare. That's my lovely neighbour Pauline, who was dancing for you. Right, I'm going to go and scoot into the hallway. She's coming back through the window. I'm going to go I'm back so into the. <laughs> you, you're doing it so. You're doing it beautifully, sweetheart. <laughs> I won't get you bombed. Don't worry. Phooey. <laughs> um, calculator. Right. Well, that is. That's not great news. Um, Yesterday, uh, work started. 
for boarding, been running up and down the stairs. Yesterday the work started and just as he was getting underway this morning, things started to wobble a bit. Bosses turned up to have a look and said, stop, stop everything. And he's called us in. The situation out there is far worse than we thought. Sod's law, isn't it? Sod's blimmin' law. So uh, I've just had my neighbour, Pauline, has been up here with me in my kitchen. We've been sitting with the accounts. I do all the accounts for the building. Uh, I'm like the building treasurer. We've gone to our maintenance fund. Our maintenance fund is not going to cover this work. We've also a quick ring around to the to the other flat holder who's at work, the our guy in this shop. The one saving grace I would say in this building is I have been so fortunate, blessed with brilliant neighbours. She's such a great lass. You know, whether it's wanting someone to celebrate with or someone to a shoulder to cry on, she's been great over the years and in a situation like this, two things. One, you want each other to lean on rather than having to cope with these things on one's own. But two, just in terms of communication, they're all brilliant. So we've been able to get in touch with all the parties who have an interest in the building, where some of us are here. Um, and we've, sort of, I mean, we've had to agree to go ahead with the work. It's so, Pauline's been out there and also she's, taking a load of close-up photos I, I can see from the kitchen I can see the issues but she's done a load of close-up photos because I didn't want to crawl out there today so yeah we're gonna proceed with the work that's gonna empty out the collective maintenance fund the rest of it the the shortfall we'll all pay into but it's a bit complicated that's why I've had the calculator out it's a bit complicated how it works because we all pay a base amount and then anything over and above it's done on a ratio on a percentage based on sort of loosely based on square footage of property so I've got the smallest property so my percentage over and above is the smallest percentage so because I happen to love doing maths and also because I'm the treasurer uh, I've just sat and done all the maths to work out how much each of us will have to pay in extra to cover this work. I've just emailed everybody with all that with all that maths detail so everybody knows where they stand. <laughs> Wait for people's money to arrive. Oh, it's just, oh, I just could have done without. Um, it's really annoying slash disappointing that. You know, look, it's not a pity party, it's more of a grrr party because I live on so little, week in, week out, week in, week out. All I allow myself is that 35 quid. And if I earn 50 pounds or 100 pounds more over and above that each month, I always put it away because really I don't have much of a safety net otherwise. I don't have any safety net otherwise. And I'm so glad I do for occasions like this. The reason I'm so gutted though is because it's going to pretty much wipe out one of my savings fund and it's the savings fund that I started, I think I started it about three years ago um, and it's a savings fund specifically for furniture and things I would need in my new home. So a wardrobe, a fridge, a freezer, a cooker, a new sofa, a really new sofa, curtains, anything like that. So that's my fund for my new home and it's kind of been wiped out <laughs> by that stinking wall out there. Oy vey. You know, I have other savings funds. Like I said, it's not a pity party. I have, um, I have a separate savings fund which is for the solicitor and the estate agent's fees and the removals van fees. I've got another separate savings account which oh, that's going to be dipped into soon as well and that's for, it's my equipment fund so I always have a fund for computer, sewing machine, camera because that's how I earn my living so if one or the other 
if any of them break, I have a fund there so I can replace it straight away so I can continue to earn a living. The computer needs replacing. I mean, I've been saying it since probably 18 months. It really needs it now. So oh, that's going to wipe that savings account out. Ah, you, look, I mean, it's kind of scary, but on the other hand, I think there would probably probably be a lot of people in my position who wouldn't even have the savings. They'd be spending it each week. And even if it's, you know, 15, 20 quid a week, you can easily fritter 15, 20 quid away without noticing it. Uh, so, yeah, that's my advice to everyone is always, always, every month, if you possibly can, even if it's five quid, put something away for such a day as <laughs> when you've got a wall however many feet up in the air that's about to collapse and come crashing through the whole building possibly <sighs> yeah thank goodness for savings accounts and more than anything thank goodness for fantastic neighbors who are so easy to communicate with and who in moments like this we all kind of we we all lean on each other, we pitch in, we get the job done. Uh, let's hope, let's firmly, firmly, firmly cross fingers and hope that that's the last big expense here before I can move because, um, yeah, I don't want to be using my precious moving fund on anything for here now. I'm done, I'm done here, that's it. Right, as we were, let's get on with, let's get on with the rest of the day. Flipping heck. Well, this is the end of day two after the, oh, have we got a palaver on our hands? Yes, we have. Um, oh, it's so lovely to see. Oh, look at that sky. It's gorgeous. I'm just really glad it's, it's dry. Although, obviously, they've tucked everything up against rain. So at the moment, that where underneath where the blue is, that's now like a big, it's just a, a hole, <laughs> a hole under there. Ay, caramba but it's getting on. Oh, they've, they've re-rendered, I can see they've re-rendered this section. Obviously it's drying in the sun. Yeah, you put the sun to help out. That bit's been re-rendered. These aren't the bits we're concerned about though, it's that bit and it's the whole of the back face there. <coughs> well, it's underway. It's weird, isn't it, with, with any kind of build... Oops, sorry, I've just kicked the bucket. Um, it's weird with any kind of building work. You're sort of in their hands, and this is not my area of expertise, so... Or, nor for any of us in the building, so we just have to trust them. And that's always a weird one. It's, it's, it's weird when you have to trust someone that you're basically paying thousands of pounds to. Um... <laughs> Yeah, it's a horrible, horrible feeling, but never mind the horrible feeling. Let's enjoy the green. Can you see in the far, far distance? I don't know if I've ever probably showed you this view. Let's, let's do this a little bit. In the far, far distance, behind those two trees, right in the middle of the shop now, you can see a bit of a hill. That's Blackheath. That's, you know, once upon a time, four or five hundred years ago, that was sort of the edge of London. And, well, a lot of, sadly, that's where a lot of the plague victims ended up. Get them outside of the city walls and bury them in a heap on that hill. Pretty good view though, isn't it? And if I keep looking round, round, we can't see it at this time of day, but at night time, around about here or so, because it lights up, is the Dartford Bridge. It's a massive, massive bridge. I think it's the last bridge on the Thames, 
be, I mean, the Thames just, it just gets too wide after that. But yeah, I can see it at night because it's lit up. Oh, gosh, that sky is gorgeous. What a beautiful, beautiful change from all the grey and the wet we've had. We are, though, forecast a whole lot more rain. So hopefully the guys can get on with this and get done before the worst of the weather sets in. Here's hoping. Oh dear, oh dear, oh dear, oh dear. I can't push the window too wide open. Um, not, not the ideal weather for roofing work. <clears throat> they did a bit more this morning and then, yeah, they packed up. Guys were out in their anoraks, <laughs> bless them. It's chucking down. Oh, it's, I think it's lightening up a bit, actually. I love this sight of the water running off the slate, though, into the gutters. I love this slate full stop. And I even love things like the lead work. When we had the roof redone, I know this is not a very glamorous shot, but yeah, when we had the roof redone, it was really hard to find, but I insisted on beautiful, gorgeous Welsh slate for our roof. <clears throat> they were trying to, it was cheaper to get slate from either China or Canada, but I pitched in the extra <laughs> to have Welsh slate. Gorgeous. But yeah, this is, oh. I mean, it was forecast. We knew this was coming. What we've not had in this little clip a couple of seconds ago, claps of thunder, lightning. I was gonna say, hopefully it'll pass through fairly quickly. But oh, it's not looking nice up there, is it? Oh, poor roof, <laughs> poor roof. Hopefully the sun will come out tomorrow. I absolutely love moments of serendipity. Oh my goodness, reaching, reaching, reaching. I've just had a parcel arrive, um, completely unexpected. I had no idea it was, it was coming. Doorbell rang. I went on the intercom, hello. Post it, got a delivery for you, Vivi. <laughs> It's like, okay, I'll come down. Oh, what a joyous parcel. It has come from Lisa, and Lisa is on the Wirral. Hello, the Wirral. Oh, some of you may not know where the Wirral is, especially if you're outside the UK. The Wirral is, and let me reverse this for your camera shot. The Wirral is in the northwest of England, and it's a little peninsula of land that sticks out bound on the north side or it's kind of on a slant but the river mersey and on the south side by the river d so you can think the river mersey okay liverpool the river d chester some of you may have been to chester actually as tourists had a visit to wander amongst all the gorgeous timber framed buildings and that lovely sort of would you call it an arcade? It's an open street, but the on either side where the shops are, it's sort of like two-tiered. It's really beautiful. Um, so it's all the, yeah, it's the timber, you know, when you think of medieval slash Tudor buildings with the black and white, the black timbers, the white uh, plaster in between. It's gorgeous. Um, I haven't been to Chester for years probably not since gosh probably not since the mid 80s it may have changed i'm sure all the buildings are still there and being really well looked after but it's a lovely place to visit uh you can go and enjoy those that gorgeous architecture do a bit of shopping it's quite shoji quite expensive i think it's gone a bit of footballers wives now but then afterwards you can go down to the river d and hire a boat and go and row on the D for a little while. It's lovely. Anyway, yes, the Wirral. <laughs> when we were kids, it was always sort of like, oh, the Wirral, it's quite posh over on the Wirral. 
for birthdays, uh, birthdays are on my mind at the moment, sometimes as a treat we would go over to New Brighton which is on the sort of the north easterly tip of the peninsula sort of on the opposite side uh, to Liverpool. Oh my goodness I loved that birthday trip to New Brighton. So for my mum it was great my sister and I having our birthdays two days apart meant we could do one activity for both of us <laughs> get all the birthday done and over with. So yeah, we'd go over to New Brighton and I loved the, what would you call it, amusement park? So they had some sort of smallish fairground rides and all the, the penny machines, the slot machines, the, the shoving, dropping, grabbing, all of those kind of things. Loved it. So we'd get to, you know, spend a bit of our birthday money or pocket money. I loved what does he call it? The House of Fun. Oh, the House of Fun was the best bit of New Brighton. Um, so to get into the House of Fun, there was a staircase that the steps would do that. So you'd be, Whoa! and I remember there was one section and you come out of the house on like a balcony. I say house, you know, it's a set, isn't it? It's part of a fun fair. But yeah, this one strip had on the floor, there were these sort of big discs that spun, but each disc spun in the opposite direction. So you'd stand on one and you'd be going, oh, turning that way, and you'd stand on the next, oh, turning this way. Oh, I loved the fun house, it was brilliant. Um, and then we'd go and have birthday tea somewhere. Actually, there's a cute little story I, I sort of have a vague memory. We'd gone to a cafe in the afternoon for tea and it was my first ever time having a glass of a fizzy drink. It was lemonade, first time ever. So I was probably about four or five. I can remember the net curtains behind me. So we were on the seafront, the net curtains are behind. We're in this cafe. And apparently, I don't remember saying this, but apparently I leaned over my glass and of course where the fizzes were popping and bubbling, apparently I declared very loudly to the whole cafe, it's raining in my glass. Because <laughs> I've never experienced a fizzy drink before. Uh, yeah, happy, happy memories of the Wirral. Oh, and also um, Thurstaston. Sometimes we go over to Thurstaston, which is... It, it's kind of on the lower side of the peninsula. I'm doing it that way, aren't I? So if that's the peninsula, it's more on this side. And it's, is it a country park? I don't know if it's got that label. Um, but huge boulders. It would be an amazing place to go bouldering. I bet people do. I bet people go bouldering there. But for us as kids, it was just this fantastic playground to scramble up and over the rocks and through nooks and crannies and hide and oh Thurstiston loved it oh my goodness Lisa <laughs> just knowing that this parcel has come from the Wirral has just made my brain go ping 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 with really really happy memories of me and my sis um just playing on our birthdays thank you lovely anyway <laughs> I've um I've digressed completely the reason I'm talking about serendipity is because in that previous clip, as you saw, this roof issue uh, being much worse than we thought. I won't, I mean, I've literally just said it in that other clip. But what I was mentioning was I've had to delve into one of my savings funds to wipe it out. And I was mentioning it's for things in my future home, like wardrobe, curtains, fridge, freezer, and all that. Now, when I do come to move, the plan will be to buy somewhere quite a chunk below my top budget in order to have that extra for doing it up. Kitchen, bathroom, furniture, etc, etc. But still, I'm a bit ticked off about having to dive into that fund because, you know, who knows what that budget's going to be. Anyway, so that was what I was mentioning. And then... Lisa, it's like you must have read my mind or something. 
she sent me a parcel as she said what did she say in her note i'm having a clear out and thought of you so she sent some bits and bobs some fabric some linens and said look do what you want with them if they're not for you take them to a charity shop whatever now i have mentioned on numerous occasions how i'm not a fan of the color yellow but I should be a bit more specific actually because I'm not a fan of really, really acid yellow or lemon yellow. I like lemons, but acid yellow, le lemon yellow, ooh, it, 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 it leaves me cold as a colour. But I do, I do sometimes in some situations like um, a sort of a buttery yellow or a custardy yellow, a mustardy yellow, a custardy, mustardy, buttery yellow. It's all food yellows. <laughs> um, so in some scenarios, I, I don't mind yellow when it's those kind of more soft, warm, gentle yellows. It's yellow. But... The reason I'm talking about serendipity is, can you tell what it is yet? Look, it's a pair of curtains. They aren't they so jolly and happy making and cheerful and just love this, this kind of, there's a brightness to them, but it's not that kind of gaudy yellow I can't stand. I mean, Lisa, goodness me. You sent this parcel before I got the roof news. You couldn't have known. But it's like, it's like I waved a magic wand. They're fairly long. Now, at the moment, obviously, I don't know where I'm going to be living. I don't know how big the windows will be, how long, how short, whatever. But I can tell you something. I'm taking these with me. I mean, if the windows are shorter, obviously, I can cut them down. If they're longer, there are things I could do. I could add just, I could add sort of a border all the way around in, in say a cream. So it's obviously a different fabric, but I could do that to widen them and lengthen them. Uh, but yeah, I think, I think it's, they're just really cheerful. And I'm just so grateful because it's one of those things, isn't it? I, every now and again, I forget. I forget about what's going to be needed down the line. And then every now and again, when I remember, I think, crikey, yeah, you know, my wardrobe here, it's built in. And all that shelving, which would be normally, say, um, a tall boy, chest of drawers, that's built in. All my appliances are built in. So when I leave, <laughs> they're all staying. But the big thing, of course, is the curtains. And I, I was actually talking about this to my mum a week or so ago and saying how... I was saying to her that, you know, my charity shops around here, I'm, I'm always seeing really fantastic curtains, but I keep thinking, well, there's no point in picking any of them up because I don't know what my home is going to be like, but I'm going to need something because I don't have any window coverings in this flat because I'm... Well, at the back I'm not overlooked and at the front I've only been overlooked for the last four years since those flats were built. Beforehand it was just a big open view of all the gardens of the two roads that run away from me. Uh, so yes, I've, I've never had curtains and as I was saying to my mum, when I first get there, um, I don't really want to, you know, buy curtains or make curtains straight away because I want to... I want to ease myself into the place. I want to feel, I want to see and feel the light in order to know how I want to decorate, all that kind of stuff. So I said, literally, I think when I move in, I'm just going to use a couple of old duvet covers and nail them, <laughs> nail them up. And I was even thinking that I would look out for whatever's cheapest either really long curtains or duvet covers whatever look out for them cheap so that when I get there I can just literally nail those up onto the window until I decide what I'm doing until I get decorated and then I can buy the perfect fabric and make the perfect curtains anyway what a great start to my curtain journey my curtain journey <laughs> do you know what I bet there's someone who would do that on YouTube anyway Lisa, what a fantastic parcel. I'm so touched. Um, yes, 
I really hope I can use them. Yay! So thank you so much, Lisa. I'm I'm chuffed. I'm touched by your whole parcel. What a lovely, lovely thing to do. And you know what? Let's keep recycling stuff. Let's let's keep things in use. You didn't Lisa didn't need them anymore. Now I will use them. And if, like I say, when I get to my new home, if they're not right for whatever reason, then I can either take them to the charity shop or cut them up and make something else. Make a bed cover, bed throw, whatever. Anyway, I love that. I love the serendipity of it, of literally a couple of days ago, me talking about, you know, there, go, there goes my curtains fund. <laughs> um, but also just that whole, you know, that whole nostalgia, sudden whoosh of memories about the Wirral. You know, it's this time of year and yeah, that's lovely, lovely, lovely memories. Oh, the other thing about um, New Brighton, I just suddenly remembered as well, is there's a fort at New Brighton and it was only ever accessible at low tide. There's a little causeway goes out to it, so you have to wait for the tide to go out and then you can walk out um, and get to the fort. And I always used to fantasise as a kid about the tide coming in and getting cut off and having to spend the night in the fort. Ooh. But I understand, and I actually looked it up, I don't know, a couple of years ago, I, I think it was the fort at New Brighton, but it's now had a proper sort of road or at least pathway built out to it. So it's now permanently attached to land, as in even when the tide is in and up high, you can still get out to the fort. What a shame. What a shame to destroy that bit of magic for kids of... It's my first, it was my first ever experience of getting somewhere via a causeway at low tide. And I just thought that was the most wonderful, magical thing in the world. <laughs> oh, Lisa, you've sent me into a lovely little dizzy trip of happy memories. Thank you. Thank you. Right, what am I going to do next? Well, what I'm going to do next is is fold these up nicely and find somewhere to pack them away so that um, they'll come with me to my new home. <laughs> oh my goodness. Today is turning into a little bit of a roller coaster. Um, emotions at the pot and obviously that business with the roof, let's get that fixed and ooh. And then yay, curtains. Um, and my plan for the rest of the afternoon, it's fast disappearing. Lots and lots of admin. One of the things I wanted to do is, was to make sure with that bank account I mentioned when I was talking about the roof, paying for the roof, I wanted to make sure all the monies were in. It's really humid this afternoon. Um, I wanted to make sure all the monies were in. Everyone's, the people who need to be paid are getting paid. I just wanted to just check, and maintain that account. Couldn't log in. Um, you know, thank goodness for the internet and for doing things online, because when it works, boy, oh boy, it makes life easier, doesn't it? Especially as that bank we use, we no longer have a branch on our high street. Anyway, couldn't log in. It came up with an error code, called this number, called the number, and, oh, my stomach turned over because they said, yeah, we've locked you out because we suspect some fraudulent activity on the account. No one wants to hear that, do they? I was passed from pillar to post and eventually I obviously got through to the right person in the fraud department. And they were saying, have you tried to make a payment for five and a half thousand pounds to such and such a person? And I said, no. No way, that is nothing to do with me, nothing to do with us. And I had to then explain the account, how it's actually an account that I run, but it's all sorts of individuals pay into it because it's for the service charge for the property and da da da. So um, she was going through all this with me and then she said, oh, hang on a minute. Oh no, I don't think that's on your account. It was, 
it was a mistake that had been inputted on Friday afternoon by someone else in the department had spotted something and had put a flag on my account, but it wasn't my account. So I said, are you, can you absolutely reassure me that that five and a half thousand pounds is nothing to do with my account? She said, no, it's absolutely nothing to do with your account. However, there is a rather large payment of 3,000, which we've stopped, da, da, da. and I said, well, actually, that's the deposit for the roof. Um, please, please release that, because I had had an email from the company saying, where's our deposit? Oh, anyway, jumping through hoops, and then, you know, I had to do so much proving who I was, and also in terms of paying the roofers, I had to do so much proving about them. <sighs> It's sorted and I'm back into my account, I'm back online. At one point she said to me, but it wasn't the, the, the final woman I spoke to was brilliant and got everything sorted and was really reassuring and laughed at my jokes. Um, but someone before her had said to me, uh, in order to identify me, can you tell me how much is in the account? And I said, no. <laughs> How, of course I can't, because I can't get into the account. I'm locked out. I can't get online. I can't see how much is in there. I don't know whether you've paid people or not. Also, the other people in my building are sending money in. I don't know who's paid and who hasn't. I have no idea how much is in there. I said, but I can tell you exactly the transactions I made on Friday before this all went wrong. She went, oh, no, sorry, that doesn't identify you. Yeah, tell me how much is in the account. I don't know because I can't see my account, duh. Anyway, it's sorted, it is sorted, and it only took an hour of my time. And this is, this is one of those things, isn't it, in life where, you know, sometimes people say, I don't understand why you're not getting anything done today. It's like, well, I've just spent an hour on the phone for no reason. Someone put a flag on the account on Friday. It was the wrong account to have put it on because of that da, da. anyway i'm glad it's sorted i could have done without spending i feel like i've gone really red of cheek as well i think i was getting a bit uh, i wasn't being angry with anyone on the phone i never do that i never ever do that because whoever i'm on the phone with they're just an they're, they're just an employee they're just looking at a screen and reading stuff you know they have done nothing wrong to me personally um but yeah i just feel a bit flustered Anyway, <sighs> thank goodness, thank goodness. I mean, it just goes to show, doesn't it, how we all need to take responsibility as well for our accounts and that particular account, because it's used so infrequently, I don't check in on it very often, maybe once a month. I think I'll do it more. All my other accounts, my own personal accounts, savings and all that, I check them every single day. Now. That might seem like a lot of faff. In fact, it only takes me about 10 minutes in the morning. It's part of my morning routine. Bring it up, check, check, check. Bring it up, check, check, check. All fine, good, moving on. Um, because there was that one time, you might remember a couple of years or so ago when I, I was, I did have a fraud on, on one of my accounts and it had happened, I think it was like two days prior so I was able to get all that money back. Um, I was protected by the bank, great. It's just that reminder, check your accounts. And, and I suppose, you know, look, that's been a bit inconvenient today. I could have done without spending an hour on the phone with the bank. Also emailing all the, everyone in the building again, because I'd had emails saying, has my money come through? And I couldn't tell. Um, so now I've emailed everyone to let them know, yes, everything is fine, it's all sorted. So yeah, a bit of an inconvenience. However, I would I would rather the bank shut me out for a minute <laughs> or more if they think there's something dodgy going on and then me phone them and get it fixed than to let five and a half grand go to someone who I don't know or what. You know what I mean. Anyway, oh, calming down now, calming down. Um. Right, so I'm going to carry on with the other admin I was going to be doing this afternoon. This afternoon is fast disappearing. It'll be this evening before we know it. Thank goodness for long, light evenings, which kind of make us feel like we can still be active and doing stuff and, and reaching our goal for the day, whatever the goal is. 
on that note, I'm going to love you and leave you. Gorgeousities. Please stay well, whatever you're up to. And hopefully the sun is shining a little bit on you too. If it is, turn your face up like a sunflower. And bask in it for a moment. Until the next one, gorgeous people everywhere. Cheerio.